tough competitor. I'm glad I got hit and was able to get it back and give the fans a, a really, really good show and earn this IBF middleweight championship of the world. Two-time champion, it feels great, and I think I'm in the best possible position in my career right now, so I'm looking forward to the near future. Guys, we're gonna open it to the floor. You give a mic. Well, I knew that, yeah, I think I think someone should get a mic when they speak so everybody yeah, can hear us. But um, his question was, is there any familiarity with Sergey being that I spawned him so many rounds? And there was. I knew that he, he had his angles that he tried to implement inside the ring, and I was able to take advantage of that. And I know also from sparring him that he gets tired once he misses. Um, I heard through the grapevine that his, his uh, goal was to go to the body this fight. And he did that tremendously. Um, much respect to him, but definitely it helped a lot um, being inside the ring with him before. So I was able to use my advantages. But I've always said that sparring is totally different from being inside that ring. I wish I would have had a little bit more time that first round. We could have had another uh, first rounder, spe spectacular knockout. But this is the sport of boxing. Um, all I can be doing is. All I can do is uh, be grateful with how I won with the unanimous. Was it unanimous? Split. 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 That Philly <laughs> real. I ain't going to complain. I got the belt. Danny, during the rounds, you said to your corner there's a situation that you couldn't hear. What was happening during those rounds? The dialogue. I was telling him that. He was telling me what to do uh, while I was inside the ring, but I was telling him I couldn't hear him. We have a great uh, communication when we're in. Obviously, when we're in training, it works out. But in the fight, that's how we're able to keep in tune with what I'm doing. So he was telling me, I was telling you do this and do that. But I'm, you know, letting them know, hey, I can't hear you. So sometimes a boxer's mind can go elsewhere and get a little stagnant. So that's why you have great trainers like Andre keep you, you know, on point. Danny, has it settled in? You're legitimately a champion now. Before it was the regular belt, they made a little bit of that in the press conferences leading up to the week. That might have been something that was a thorn in your side in the past. You're legitimately IBF recognized major belt holder right now. Yeah, it hasn't kicked in yet, but I'm just grateful. But with success, is always going to come some type of somebody saying something negative, and I understand that. So whether it was a regular world championship, I'm just grateful that I'm world champion again and I get to be in the position that I've always claimed, which is one of the best middleweights, if not the best middleweight in the world. So now I'm more of a, uh, whereas before I used to be, oh, this guy, you know, he's good. It's more of a threat, you know, not enough reward. So now I got the reward. So hopefully we can make these big fights in the future. Dan, Dan was it, Dan? Oh, sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> of course. My question for you, Danny, is this. Uh, middleweight's really a hot division right now. You're now a free agent broadcast wise. You have a belt. You're a big name in the weight class. What, what do you want to do right now? You, you kind of have the world where the world's your oyster, I guess. Is, is, that, is that oyster? Yeah, the world is your oyster. I love oyster. oysters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we is hungry. And we is hungry right, right now. You have the belt. You have your, your ability to go anywhere you want. Yeah. You have any outlet. And you have the title. You have a name. It's bittersweet, you know. HBO treated me like like a king, you know. The amount of promotion that we got, the respect, the attention that we got is bar none. Uh, I'm grateful that I was the one that they chose to give that to. Um, now that we're a free agent, all these time is gonna tell what's gonna happen, but right now I just wanna enjoy this belt. I wanna go enjoy my family and enjoy, look back at the fight and see what I could have done better. Maybe then uh, either Andy or your manager Keith can address that. Uh, end of, end I prefer business. really not to address it right now. It's just mainly just, you know, enjoying this. What, what happens in the future, you'll hear about it real soon, for sure. Thank well, you. tell us about the game plan. Uh, Ray, both of you talked about the game plan in regards to the switch of stances throughout the Well, switching Southport is never Andre's idea. <laughs> you know, like I've always said, if I could be Southport at the beginning of my career, I would have loved to. That's one of the things that, you know, as you can see, each and every fight that I have, I try to implement it a little bit here and there, but you can see it was a, it was an advantage. Um, I could have worked my jab a little bit more. We were in camp, we was working with Demetrius Andre, we were sparring partners. He was giving me a little tricks on how to work the southpaw jab and keep my distance. So 
cheers, uh, much respect and cheers to Boo on his championship and just being my brother and being there for me in camp. We was helping out each other. I couldn't ask for uh, better assistance. Well, after the final you said you very well. You like the fact that how you, you know, maneuver around the ring. Yeah, no, I think I did very well. Like I said, you can always go back and see what you could do better. Um, and obviously, Andre was screaming out, jab, jab, jab. But I know Sergey. I know Sergey was planning coming over that right hand or coming under that right hand. And he got a, he got a little pop, you know. I'm not going to lie. He was going to the body very well. So that was really my biggest fear was him coming over with a big shot. So I maybe didn't put too much emphasis on the jab, but I have my reasons for it. Eddie, what do you got? Oh, I knew I, I, knew I had him hurt. And I know um, even in sparring, once I caught Sergey with a couple good shots, he will always back up. So, and that's why I said, you know, a professional match is totally different. Once you put those 10 ounce gloves on, the headgear come off. You know, uh, those those little things you used to do before, the triple jab or coming in without that worry, you got much more to worry about now, and, and we showed that. It was a very close fight. Andy, over here. Oh, sorry. I know the voice. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be that close. Um, I knew I lost maybe a couple middle rounds, uh, but the fact that one judge had me losing, I don't agree with that at all. But the fact that I got this victory, I'm not going to complain. All I can do is uh, go back to the drawing boards and see what I can do differently. But what I would say is that I hope that judges or some way, somehow, that boxers and fighters can understand what goes through the minds of the judges, or they can tell us prior <laughs> to the fights the type of style that they're judging. So it's not like, you know, we, we're just completely oblivious to what we need to do in there, because you want to cater to your style, but you also want to cater to the judges, just in case you go to a decision and you get these bogus uh, outcomes. Yeah, I'm going to let you fight again. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, listen, it was no emotion for me. <laughs> this is kill to be killed sport. Mm. This man was trying to take away from my family. He was trying to take away from my future. And that very moment, for however long it lasts in that ring, there was no emotion for me. Afterwards, I felt some type of way, but not enough to, you know, let it affect me inside that ring. He's a true gentleman, and he has a beautiful family. This was the highest payday that he's ever had of his career. So I'm sure he'll be able to do well in the near future. And I wish him the best of luck, but as far as emotions inside that ring, to deter me from wanting to take his head off, that wasn't there, brother. This ain't ballet. This, this ain't ballet. <laughs> Eddie, question to you. Danny. What do you have next for Danny? What do you want? What are your plans? What do you want next for the man? Um, I, I would love him to get the Canelo fight. You know, it's a fight that we nearly got in May. Uh, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, and now, you know, like he said in the ring, he's a champion then. He gets to call the shots. If he, if he wants an, a defense, he gets a defense. But <coughs> at this stage in his career, I think that the Canelo fight is the fight. And, you know, I know Dan asked the question, but... I really echo what Danny said about HBR. I think tonight's not really about talking about other networks and the plans. It's about giving thanks to HBO for what they did for not just Danny, but for me and for Keith. And, you know, they believed in all of us to make the switch. They gave him two good solid fights and then they delivered the big one. You know, he had two good fights, fought for the world title. And we want to thank Peter Nelson and, and all the guys at HBO. And it's sad to see him leave boxing. No one wants to see him leave boxing. But, you know, they backed Danny Jacobs and, uh, you know, I think right now, you know, especially tonight, it's not really talked about the future and networks and stuff like that. It's, it's to thank them for their support. And for me, you know, ultimately Danny and Keith will decide who they want next, but I would love to see them fight Canelo in May. Danny Crichton here from the Fight City. Congratulations again. It's a different fight. We talked to Andre, and Andre said he didn't want this fight. This was a family affair. You made business and won the title. Congratulations. How do you go about now when it's bad feelings? Basically, the kids have fought, the parents got to step in. How do you basically now go and say, okay, sir, I want to work with you, Gary, no hard feelings, when 
it's boxing. It is, it is personal. There are probably hard feelings. Only, only time will tell. Um, if you're a true gentleman, you take your losses with your losses, just like you take your wins. And we show each other love inside the ring and outside the ring and backstage. So I don't look forward to any animosity towards each other. But truth be told, every boxer has animosity towards everybody. This is an ego sport. And, you know, I was a better man than tonight. How the near future will work out once we cross each other's paths or if we will continue to be sparring partners, who knows? But right now, I'm just enjoying this victory. I knew he was a tough fighter. Um, and this is what, my fourth undefeated fighter in a row? I mean, we're creating a good legacy for myself, man. Thank you, thank you, Baz. Love you, baby. I'm <laughs> <laughs> the only one that clapped for that. <laughs> but, um, I'm just trying to prove to the world that I'm the best middleweight. All these guys are picking and choosing who they want to fight. They're not picking the best fights out there, but yet they're claiming the title of, I'm the best, or I'm the most feared. You got to show and prove. And tonight, I fought one of the best middleweights in the division. You guys might not have heard of him, but if you study exactly who he is and what he brings to the table, as you can see, we fought one of the best middleweights in the world, and I'm proud of myself. Danny, to your, uh, to your left, Danny. To your left. Oh, okay. yeah, In moments like this, do you think at all about kind of where you were seven years ago, just kind of how far you've come, not just with the title, but also everything kind of at your fingertips right now as you uh, I mean, I think about it every now and then, but one thing that I learned, you know, post-cancer was to enjoy every moment of every day, find the little things to be grateful for. This was a dream of mine to be at this realm, to be at this place in my life where I was considered champion and thriving in boxing. It's always been a dream of mine, but honestly, just being here and living and having a chance to see my son and my family and my loved ones every day, that means everything to me. This is just, this material stuff, man. I mean, yeah, I love to please the fan, but my outlook on life is totally different because my life is almost taken. So the fact that I can live every day and breathe every day and be around my loved ones, see the sun shine and you know, see my, my, my family, it's priceless. That alone is priceless. Yo, Danny, right here. Um, directly in front of you. Um, congratulations on your win tonight. I am familiar with the pedigree of uh, the Russian Chinko. Um, first, I'd like to ask you, what are your thoughts on Canelo versus Felder? And things don't normally go perfect or the way they should, um, you know, in boxing. But if Canelo does lose, you know, would you fight um, Dimitri Zandri to unify the title to those friends? Um, I'm up for, for, for any fight that makes sense. Um, me and Boo Boo had a discussion before that we would only do it for the big bucks and we would only do it for unification. Um, but if it's a fight that makes sense for the near future, I can't go against it. That's like my brother though. And, and we have an understanding. Uh, but if an upset happens, which it always does in boxing, you can never dictate what happens. We'll have to see for the near future, but I have no plans to find them. Is it something that I want to do? Absolutely not. It's not like a Peter Quillen or a Sir Victor Vincenco where we're just associates. Like, I've known Boo Boo since I was 15, 16 years old. We came up the amateur ranks together. His father is like an uncle to me. You know, this is way more personal than anything. But we also love the sport of boxing, and we also want to do it for the sport of boxing. So we have plans on facing each other, but hopefully in the future, not the near future. Danny, uh, Danny, congratulations on right. the win. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Over to your right. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Give me one second. Give oh, me one sorry. second. Yeah, yeah. Just know, project your voice. Sorry. Uh, I know you and Sergey are close friends, and uh, seeing how close the fight appeared to be down the line, I know you're interested in Canelo and whatnot. Would you entertain the opportunity for a rematch for him? Oh, a rematch for Sergey? Yeah. Do you think that makes sense right now? No. Down the line, you know. If he was to prove himself or maybe capture a title, maybe. But. That's not even my thought process right now. You know, I'm going for the bigger, better opposition. <clears throat> not to say that he wasn't that, meaning the bigger fights, the marquee fights, uh, the fights that will, you know, solidify my legacy. We're looking for those fights. Yeah. Okay, Danny, first off, congratulations. Thank you. Fight. And also, on kicking cancer's ass. Thank you, brother, thank you. Um, you, you alluded to earlier, um,
other fighters talking the talk and not really showing it up, showing up and sort of walking the walk. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's a, a Charlo in that mix somewhere. <coughs> Uh, if, if you had an opportunity to fight Charlo at this point, or somewhere in the near future, would that be a fight that you could get behind? Uh, I know we were talking about Boo a moment ago, that's something you really don't have the, uh, the motivations to fight. But uh, if you had the opportunity to fight one of the Charlos uh, down the line, would that be something that you could uh, you get yourself split. up for? <laughs> <laughs> and he just said 90 turns split. <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, if that's something that the fans want, because I've always been vocal about, you know, fighting uh, Jamal. And, um, this fuel that, we, that we're, this feud that we're having is, is, is being built. He's fighting William Monroe his next fight, so he's has obligations right now. We can't say anything because that victory is not promised or assured. So he has, to, he has to look good, and hopefully if he gets that victory, we can talk about that in the near future. But... Um, you know I want you, you. You know I want that fight. That's a fight that we want, and that's a fight that has been brewing for some time now. So, if there's any personal fight that I want, yeah, it's that fight. But we also have a management. We also have a promotion that's going to get us the bigger and better fights that make sense for my career. Danny, uh, congratulations on the victory tonight, the world championship. Um, I, earlier, Andre had said that um, one of the fights that he wants to see you in is a Golovkin rematch. He said that there's unfinished business there, and now that you have the belt, he doesn't have the belt, you have some leverage there. Is that a fight that uh, um, intrigues you on a personal level, uh, that you have unfinished business? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's exactly why on the broadcast I said I would give him the, the rematch, because I'm champ now, and now there's more of a new... Uh, a reward than the risk. Whereas before, he didn't give me the rematch. You know, you, I wouldn't give me a rematch too if I was going <laughs> to be honest with you. But now there's almost nowhere for him to go. And from what I'm hearing, if he doesn't sign with the zone, he's not going to get any of those big fights that he truly wants. But we'll see what happens. Um, I'm in good. I'm in good hands right now. I'm in the best position in my career. I'm just going to let this well, and you guys are going to see what's going to happen in the near future with <clears> my career. With Triple G, the word on the street is he's a possibility he's going to PBC. What do you think about that? Triple G on PBC? Let me say that again. That sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> Triple G on PBC? <laughs> that would be cool, man. Uh, I love the sport of boxing. And I'm fans of the Canelos, the Triple Gs, the, the Charlo. I'm fans of every guy that's in my division. I, res I respect boxing, and I, and I love it. So much credit, much, much uh, you know, support. Whatever you want to consider it, much love to Triple G and his endeavors or whatever he chooses to go down the line, whether it's CBC, ESPN, the zone, much respect to him. But right now, I think it's the game of Jacob Sharp. Eddie, you have IBF Middleweight Champion right next to you. You have the WBO Middleweight Champion. Now you have the WBC Middleweight Champion. What are your thoughts on how you feel about that? Oh, that's right. Well, <clears throat> My thoughts are is that um, I want to see them. I, I believe they're only touching the surface. I mean, Andrade won the world title last week. I would have rather he fought Billy Joe Saunders. You know, uh, Danny won tonight in a fight that he probably won't get the credit for because not enough people know about Derek and Jenga. But I want to see him in those marquee fights. You know, Charlo is a great fight. Golovkin is a great fight. But I still go back to the Canelo fight for me is one that we we nearly got him money. And that is a fight that I would love to see Danny Jacobs name up in lights in Vegas fighting Canelo. And I believe he can beat him as well. He has got to get past Fielding first, who's also our guy. So I can't talk too much about that. I know he's a, he's a favourite in the fight, but you know I think at this stage in Danny's career, you know I don't know how many fights him and Keith and, and Dre want, but for me, they all have to be, you know, the big, the big marking fights. You know, have a great rest. And one thing we've, we've tried to do with Danny consistently is to map out his schedule. You know, he box in November, and he takes a little month off, and he box again in April, and he takes a little month off, and he box again in October. Everything's been promised, everything's been delivered, and now the plan again is have a couple of months off and start camp again for Cinco de Mayo. Now you have all the things in the control of the division. No, it's, it's not about it's not about control. It's, listen, at the moment the middleweight belts, the zone seems to be the place for that division. For the welterweight division, it seems to be showtime. 
for that. So it, things change all the time, but it's not really about the belts. It's about, for me, one particular fight that I believe gives Danny, you know, and of course, the money's always important and it is a monster, monster payment. But it's a chance to be the, the absolute king of the division. And the team have always told me that the Canelo fight is one that they really, really believe they can win and really fancy. Thank you. So, congratulations, Danny. Thank you. Um, what I kind of wanted to know is how would you grade your performance? I'm sorry, did you speak up a little? How would you grade your performance tonight? And did Sergey do anything in there that, you know, kind of surprised you? And my second question is for Eddie. Um, well, let's that, answer one question at a time, because I, yeah, I, you guys have two questions. <laughs> <about that. laughs> so did he do anything in there to surprise me? No, he didn't. I knew his game plan was to go in there and try to slow me down with body shots. Because in sparring, I, when you got, you got a guy bouncing around and he's too fast, the only way to break him down is through the body. So I was expecting that. So no, he didn't do anything to surprise me. Um, he just fought one head of a fight and he didn't give up. How would you grade your own performance though? I can't grade my performance right now. Uh, initially, I'll probably say maybe a B plus, but I gotta go back to the tape and really study it to really grade myself. But that's a question I would like to ask Andre was, what do you think about my performance? What do you grade my performance? Maybe I shouldn't ask you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, no, no. Hey, I just kind of wanted to know, since you have a middleweight growth pretty much, did you kind of want to do like a round robin when you have undisputed champion at middleweight? Yeah, uh, yeah look, again, again every, everyone's case by case. Demetrius, for me, I would like to see him have two quick fights to get in the groove. He's been inactive for a long time. Danny's another story. He hasn't been inactive. He's had three fights in 12 months. He's ready to go. So you know, if Danny can beat Canelo, he becomes the IBF, the WBC, the WBA world champion. And then perhaps when you talk about Andrade fight, if that's an undisputed fight, maybe the dynamics change. But right now, I don't think those guys are looking at fighting each other. For Demetrius, I'd like to get him out active in the big fights, defending his title. But for Danny, I'd like to see him in the, in the unification. Danny, a lot of your criticizers, the Danny Jacobs haters, were saying Danny was a cruiserweight. Danny was a light heavyweight against Triple G. Now you have the IBF belt that mandates the second day weight. Right. Do you think this gives credence now to that you are a middleweight and somebody who, come, who can come in and you're not an overblown, oversized weight bully? Right. Not in unifications. <laughs> <laughs> no, no weight penalty in unification. I mean, I've always said that if I was 185 pounds in that fight with Triple G, I would have not been able to perform the way that I did. I would have been sluggish, I would have been slow, and my, my reaction time would have been off. The reason why we skipped the, the, the IBF weigh-ins of the Triple G fight was simply because I wanted to get rest. It's hard for me to get sleep the night before. And we went into that fight 175, 176 the most. The same thing with this fight. I did the second day weigh-in to prove- to Prove the haters wrong. To prove the haters wrong, but also to abide by the rules. But this was the only opportunity that I had to win the belt was to do the second day weigh-in. So we felt great, we looked good, we still were strong. It was, there's no difference from the, uh, from the two fights. Two more questions, guys. Thank you. Danny and Andre, you can chime in. Um, assuming a fight with Canelo takes place in the future, any idea what weight that would be huh. that would take place? Because he's moving up to 168. To Canelo fight. don't want to fight me at 68, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a really big boy. But, uh, You're comfortable moving up? I'm comfortable moving up. And, and, and I'm very comfortable with him moving up. <laughs> I think that um, in, in the stages of Danny's career, uh, eventually he will be a uh, super middleweight champion of the world. Uh, my brother from another mother, Keith, over here, <laughs> he thinks that Danny, it doesn't work. <laughs> he, um, he, might, he thinks that Danny will be uh, middleweight for his entire career, but I know that this young man, whole career? Most of <laughs> This young man is going to be um, a several division world champion. And um, before the end and before he enters the hallowed halls of the Boxing Hall of Fame, he might be a three weight division champion. Mm. But he will definitely be at super middleweight uh, in the future. And 
he will do what he has to do to without a doubt. Yeah. He'll do what he has to do to maintain it. Uh, Cane as for Canelo, <clears throat> with this, uh, he's going up and he's fighting uh, at 168. Uh, my my thing is, I say Canelo is going to be running around. He doesn't want to really get in the ring with someone like Danny, and we might have to chase him. But we are fast. Well, Danny's fast. I'm not fast. <laughs> Danny will chase him and get him. And uh, if it's at 68, we'll get him there. If it's at 160, we'll get him there. No matter where we have to find him, we'll get him. Uh, right here, David, one last question for me. Um, Canelo was listed at 5'9", uh, but really he's about 5'7". So. Um, moving to 168 pounds, that's a very, very dangerous fight for him against uh, Rocky Felton. A lot of people don't really know who Rocky Felton is because a lot of his fights, the majority, if not all, was a televised here in the States. So, can you give a prediction on that fight and how do you think that uh, Rocky Felton would spoil um, Canelo's plans? Well, this is boxing. Anything can happen, especially when you're fighting a bigger man. Um, I don't know Rocky's chances of winning because I don't really know his skills. I haven't really, it was really my first time ever hearing his name when the Canelo, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it was my first time hearing about him once the Canelo fight happened, but. He might be fine, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, anything happens in boxing. I just think uh, Canelo is going for history and trying to be a three division champion. So best of luck to him and uh, come back on down to the middleweight division. Let's get this thing on. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for the support. I appreciate you guys for staying and all the questions. May God bless you. Any words for Brooklyn? Say that again. Any words for Brooklyn? Brooklyn always shows up. Always. Thank you. We did it again, Brooklyn. <laughs>